Today in the Boot Guy, I'm going to answer one of my most asked questions that I get asked through email, messaging, and everything. How do I break in my boots quickly? So, I got some samples, I got some display boots here to talk about, to show you ideas and just pointers and things that you can really think about as you're breaking in that new pair of boots. Make it a little bit easier. Make it a little bit more fun. All right, let's get started. All right, first and foremost, first you have to diagnose the problem that you're having when it comes to breaking in your boots, because there's so many different types of boots. If we're talking wedge sole boots, you're more or less, you're dealing with an upper issue. You're dealing with tongue, you're dealing with toes hitting left or right. If it's a safety toe model of a boot, you're dealing with the safety toe cutting in or hitting your pinky toe. That whole breaking period is more about size. What you first have to do is you have to figure out what size your foot actually is. You have to buy your boot in order to fit your foot correctly, the front to the back. That alone can be a real pain in the butt, and I understand that, and that's why I always emphasize if you have the chance to try on a half size bigger and a half size smaller, three different pairs, in order to figure out just what's the right length. Because once you have your length figured out, once you know exactly where your arch is hitting, if it's in the right spot, if you have a high arch, if you have a flat foot, all that depends on you. Once you figure all that out, then you can really start to think about the break-in period. Now, truth be known, when it comes to breaking in a boot, if they don't fit correctly front to back, if they don't fit in the width right, there's really nothing you can do. You're basically, you're screwed. You have to make sure your boots fit you 100% correctly, just in the shape of the boot of where your foot is sitting before you can get to this point. So, now that you've decided that your boots fit you correctly, now that you know that you've got the right size, the right width, let's talk about the actual question. How to break in a pair of boots. Now there's a ton of people out there telling people to do some really stupid things when it comes to breaking in their boots. First off, a lot of guys say with logger boots and lineman boots, soak them. Go soak your feet in the bathtub and go take a five mile walk. You know what, if you're into torture, if S&M and bestiality is your thing, yeah, you know what, that might be a really good way to break in a pair of boots because you're going to have blisters, your feet are going to hurt, your knees are going to hurt. If you're into that, that's a good way to do it. Forget about everything I'm saying here, just stop this video and go soak your feet in the tub. But if you're a regular guy and if your feet make you money, so you can't really run the risk of having sore feet for three or four days when you're trying to get a job done, well, let's talk about breaking in boots the correct way. Now, first and foremost is understanding the tongue. Now, if you're buying waterproof Gore-Tex boots, like this Danner here, this is a Gore-Tex lined hiking boot that can double as a work boot, but primarily it needs to be worn in a hiking outdoor setting fishing, hunting, outdoor photography, whatever you're doing, this boot is ideal. Now, this Thorogood here, I can, let me show you this new one. So this is what a brand new one looks like. And all three of these boots, all these boots actually have gusseted tongue because everything around me is waterproof. And I guess before we go any further, I'm really talking about work boots here. I'm not talking about casual dress boots. Breaking in a pair of casual dress boots, it's a leisure boot, so you're on leisure time, so you can take it nice and slow. Work boots, a little bit different story. More times than not, when a guy is getting to the point of getting a new pair of boots, his old ones are dead because he's working them. He doesn't have time to run out there and fiddle fart around with buying new boots. He just needs something that works. So the break-in period, as minimal as it can be, is really important. Gusseted tongues. Now, a brand new gusseted tongue. I'm going to put my Danner aside for a second. Let's look at, let's look at this brand new gusseted tongue. So these two boots are identical. This is a brand new pair. This is my pair that I'm currently breaking in. So the gusseted tongue. Now, not only are you dealing with the same thickness of leather that you're going to have in the other parts of the boot, but now you're bending this leather inside and trying to get it to bend into three different positions. All right. This is tough. This is a actual thing that you have to be aware of is how to fold your tongue in correctly. Now on something like this, let's take out that beautiful insole and that lace. Let's move that aside. Now on something like this, 
It's just a matter of folding it. You start with the laces at the bottom, you tighten, you tighten, you tighten, and you keep folding that tongue as you're tightening it down. Now, your first mile walking around in a gusseted tongue, I'm not gonna lie to you. There's gonna be a little discomfort. It's going to, I don't wanna say hurt, but you're gonna know it's there. Now, threshold for pain for everybody is different, and there's no reason for this to actually be painful. Uncomfortable, yes, not painful. If it's painful, unlace the boot, open it up, find where it's hitting you, because obviously bending all this leather and a waterproof liner against your ankle is going to be painful at some point. Find where that pain is hitting you and adjust the tongue appropriately. You might have to move your tongue more to the left or more to the right, depending on where the pain is. And if that's the case, once you find the spot and once you can take some of that pressure off, move it over and go back through the lacing process and lacing it up. Now, when it comes to boots like this, tactical style boots, unlike a leather boot, there's really nothing here in the gusset section. It's liner, waterproof barrier, and top layering tongue material. It's extremely thin. So folding a tactical boot down around your foot makes this a zero break-in type boot. And I mean that. I mean, I have yet to run into a tactical boot that I have owned and worn that was uncomfortable for the first week. Maybe the first day your heel slips around a bit, and that's just a matter of collapsing that heel to fit your heel. Now, in leather boots, pull-on boots, and Western-style boots, that's an actual part of the break-in period is getting this heel to collapse around you. When it comes to tactical boots, it just kind of happens naturally. There's so many soft materials going on around that hard reinforced heel that it eventually just happens. And lacing this thing up nice and tight there helps that along. Now, when it comes to logger boots, the same thing applies about the gusseted tongue because loggers are going to have gusseted tongues all the way to the top. If you're buying good loggers, now, there's a lot of cheap loggers on the market. Okay, there's a lot of stuff that's made to look like a lineman's boot, like a logger's boot, and the price reflects that. If you're looking at a boot that has this silhouette that looks like a logger or a lineman's boot, and it's under 100 bucks, guess what? It's a piece of crap. I mean, there's no reason to even go. And if you're looking at cheap boots, thinking that you could just get by with them, you really run the risk of getting an ill-fitting boot. Part of the advantage to buying a high-quality whether it's an American made or just a high quality imported tactical boot, is that they make them in different sizes. They just don't make 10s, 11s, 12s, and 13s. There's half sizes, and then there's also widths. Now, really good companies like Thoroughgood take it down from C's and they go up to triple E's. That's a huge gamut. Companies like Danner start at D's and they go to double E's, sometimes triple E's. Companies like Carolina, they cover everybody from the B width all the way to the 4E width in most of their American-made styles. So that means that you can get yourself a really well-fitting boot that actually is going to fit all the little nooks and crannies of your foot. Back to the break-in period on the tongue. A boot like this, you might think, because it's a single-piece leather thin tongue, this tongue can actually be more painful than this if we're talking about discomfort, because you're wearing your lineman's boots and your logger boots so tight because you need this to fit. You need this shape to start happening and collapsing. And this is a pretty old boot. I've had this now for three years. This has been one of my constant wearing boots when I need something like this. And you can just tell how nicely that has collapsed around my ankle and how nicely that fits my foot. This boot will fit nobody else because I've broken it in properly. I've given it time to kind of take on the shape of my foot. And the same thing holds. When it comes to lacing these up for the first time, your loggers or your linemen, start at the bottom and keep folding that tongue. All that material, you want to fold that top part to the top of your foot and just press it all the way around and just pull those laces tight so you don't get any bumps in the tongue leather against your foot because now you're going to have this thing pushed against your ankle. And it really does help to get these to fit correctly. Now there's a big difference in the break-in period when it comes to the different sole materials. And 
Understanding that is just a matter of understanding how soles are put together. Something between a direct attached glue construction and something like a welted glued together sole boot, the break-in period is gonna be a lot different. Now, direct attached glue construction, it's always gonna be more comfortable. The whole idea of building a boot in different little parts like that, getting that material to be injected and molded around the upper is all about comfort. So if comfort's your thing, you should really try to avoid welted boots because you're, you're gonna get them comfortable, but it's not gonna be around the same time frame as something that is made in many parts and through chemistry. So these are two really good examples of soles that are actually comfortable, but have different break-in periods because of the type of sole they are. Now, oh, look at that, I got a pin stuck in there. Huh, interesting. Now this is a classic Virum kettle lift sole. This sole has been around for a while. This is the standard when it comes to hiking boots. You have a really hard material sandwiched between a soft midsole that is then sewn down on a full leather welt. Now this is a tough break-in period for sole compound. This whole boot is a tough boot to break in because not only do you have the gusseted tongue that comes all the way to the top there, but you've got a lot of heavy duty leather, you've got a thick waterproof Gore-Tex liner, and you've got a really heavy duty upper that is built properly. Now, this is the Max Wear sole from Thorogood. Super soft, super long wearing, great sole, out of the box, it's flexible, it's ready to go, it's soft, it's bouncy. The whole thing about building a boot like this in this old classic style of a wedge boot is that it's comfortable. And they are. The only thing you really have to worry about is getting the tongue in the upper and the size to fit. Now once you get all that done, it's just a matter of wearing the boot. It will break itself in around you. It's not gonna give you any sort of unwielding pain, like say something like this would, or something like this would. Now this Danner, because of how this boot is constructed in that leather welt, that heavier thick sole, it's not very flexible. Even after you break these in and get them soft and flexing to your foot, they're still not as maneuverable as let's say a tactical boot might be, or even a wedge sole boot might be. But the thing you get with a boot like this is you get a really secure fit in this section here. Cause it's designed around a hiking boot. When this tongue is folded in properly and it starts to fit around your ankle correctly, you get a really nice, comfortable boot. Now breaking in a pair of these is all about having the right socks, the right fit, and the right length. Now the one thing I can say about everything here is that you take it slow. When you're breaking in your boots, take it slow. Be ready from time to time when you're breaking in your boots and you're taking it slow to change your socks throughout the day have different thicknesses of socks. This boot alone, my first day out, I changed my socks twice and I relaced it about 20 times. And I even went as far as to remove the insole at the end of the day, just to increase the space inside the boot, just so I could get some of this leather softened up around that tongue. Now, most of the time that's not an occurrence that happens with wedge sole boots, but because of the waterproof liner that they add to the boot and the extra thicknesses on the side, it's a different type of boot than your regular wedge sole. So, so being able to go through all that as you're getting them soft, don't see it as a pain in the ass. See it as more of a labor of love because once it's soft and ready to go, you're gonna be comfortable. Now the main key thing, like I said, is to make sure your boots fit front to back, heel to toe, make sure you get the right length, and then work on the width. Measure your foot. Every time you're in a shoe store and you're trying something on, measure your foot. You get a really good idea of what your foot is, because remember, unlike any salesman in a store, you're spending all day in these. They are not. You have to make sure that you are happy with the way you feel inside your boots. Now rubbing lotions and creams and softening it up with leather type products and materials like that, it works, but it's gimmicky. The only way to really break in a nice leather product is to use it. If you're breaking in a nylon product like a tactical boot, the best way to do it is to use it. 
Once you understand that it fits your foot in length and width, then it's just a matter of you getting used to that new space. It's like moving into a new house or a new apartment. Your foot has to get used to all the little corners, all the extra room, all the lack of room compared to your older boots. All these little things have to come into play. Once you got all that figured out, break it in your pair of boots should be a labor of love. Hey, thanks a lot for watching. If there's anything I missed, feel free to comment below. I will address your comments as time progresses. If you have any questions about breaking in boots, remember, feel free, shoot me over an email, Isaac at thebootguy.com. Please, if you liked the video, give me a thumbs up. If you didn't like the video, give me a thumbs down. If you think the video sucked, please comment below and let me know. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button. And thanks a lot for watching.